So far in our class, we've been discussing growth models. Um, and we've looked at several specific ones so far. We've looked at linear growth models, where every time we grow by a specific number. We've talked about exponential growth models, where for every time we're increasing by a constant percentage. Now, if you think about the way that exponential functions work, they keep going forever and ever faster and faster. And when you're doing predictions, a lot of times that doesn't make sense. We might start with this slow to fast uh, business growth, for example, but eventually maybe there just aren't any more customers or there's competition. Um, there's not enough corners for stores to be able to withhold your market. In all of these cases, what, what might be a better explanation for our growth model is something what we call a logistic equation, where it kind of looks like it's starting with this exponential growth, but then it slows down eventually and kind of plateaus. So there's some sort of a natural limit, whether it's market saturation for a business, whether it's the environment can't support any more population because it doesn't have enough room for food or to grow. In all of these cases, there's some type of limiting factor. And that's when we know that we are looking at a logistic equation. So it starts kind of growing exponentially with kind of that nature to things, but there's a limiting factor. So there's still a percentage involved with logistic to kind of see what this initial rate is. But what really defines that logistic equation is that there's some limiting upper um, boundary for our growth. Um, in biology terms, and the ones that you'll see in a lot of texts, this is called the carrying capacity. It's how much it, the environment can hold before it can't really do any additional growth. So just like all of our other, um, our other growth models, there is a specific type of an equation that we can use for logistic growth models. So let's take a look at what that would be. Our formula for logistic growth looks a lot different than the formulas that we've been doing so far. Let me write it out and we'll kind of break it down here. So our logistic growth formula is P with an N subscript down below is equal to P with an N minus one plus R times one minus P with the N minus one subscript over K and then times by P of N minus one. All right, so we see some things that we kind of recognize here. R is just like what R was in, the, in our exponential formulas before. R is gonna be our percentage rate of growth. And this is assuming no limits. If there was infinite food and infinite space, this is how fast our population would grow. And that'll be given to you as a percentage. And just like any percentages in any formula, we need to write our percentage in decimal form here. All right, the K down here is that carrying capacity number. It's that upper limit value. Now, the P with the N minus one here and the P of N, notice that these are what we call in the, the subscript place. Before we would have things up at the top and those would be exponents and there was math stuff that we had to do. When the, when the um, variables or piece or anything is down here in the subscript position, it's just a label. Um, it does, it's just so that we can tell the difference between these two populations. They're both populations, but they're representing something slightly different. We aren't gonna do any subtraction of one here for anything. It's just to kind of tell us the difference between things. In this case, P of N is going to be the population in the year you want to know And again, this could be year, minute, month, whatever our, our growth rate is measured in. Um, and the P of N minus one is going to be the population in the year before that, before what you want. So what does this mean? If I wanna know what the population in the fifth year is, 
My calculation involves knowing what the population in the fourth year is. This is called a recursive type of a formula because what we have to do is we have to find one answer, use it in the formula to get the next answer, and then I can use that answer in the next in the formula again. So if I have a starting value, I can use my starting value to find year one. Then I can use my year one value to find year two. I can use my year three value to find year four. So you're always using the year before to find the next one along the way. The disadvantage of this, of course, is that you have to do a lot of calculations. If I asked you to find what's going on 52 years from now, you'd have to go through year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. You see you're doing a whole lot of calculations. Where with exponential, if I wanted something in the 43rd year, I could just plug 43 into the original equation. So it's a little bit more limiting, but it is still nicely defined, and it's actually a pretty easy formula to work with once you understand what all of the pieces are. The other thing that I want you to notice here as you're looking at this general formula is the fact that this P of n minus 1 shows up three different times in my equation. You see that? So whatever number I'm putting in for the year before, I'm going to use it three different times in my formula. Let's go through a quick example here so you can kind of see where these formula pieces work, and then we'll go into a more detailed example in the next video. Let's suppose that we have maybe 15 birds in a forest, and the population can support, or the environment, can only fit 100 birds before we run out of space. Now, so that gives us this 100 birds is that limiting maximum. So that's going to be our k value in our formula. And this 15 birds is our starting value. So our population at time zero. Now, we do need a growth rate as well. So if there were no limitations in the environment, let's say that our birds would grow at a rate of 12%. Okay, so my rate is R. And then don't forget, you have to always change your percentages into decimal form. So that's going to be our R is equal to 0 0.12. All right, so if I want to know what's going on in year one, I need to use my information from year zero. So let's go through how our formula is going to work. Our general formula is Pn equals Pn minus one plus R times one minus Pn minus one over K times Pn minus one. Let's put in what we know. The starting population of birds is 15. So in year one, I'm going to have 15 birds plus a 12% growth rate times by one minus, and remember this is a minus in this formula before we've always had one pluses everywhere. So do be careful for that. It's going to be one minus my year one population. So that 15 number goes in again, divided by K, which is 100. And then this is going to be times by P of n minus 1, so we're using that starting population of 15 birds again. So that 15, the population that I know, shows up three times in the formula. Now I can just enter this, cal or this calculation into Desmos. So let's pull that up real quick. And there's a lot of advantages to using Desmos in this problem, and I'll show you that in the next video. But if we want to type this expression here into our calculator, let's do it like that. We put it in just the way we see it. So it'll be 15 plus 0.12 times by a parenthesis, 1 minus. Now we can either do 15 divided by 100 if we want, or we can use this fraction button over here, the A over B, and it gives us a spot above and below. So I want to do 15 on top, and then I want to move down the bottom and put 100, my limiting factor on the bottom. Close your parentheses. And then I want to times that by 15. The times is going to put the little dot that we're looking for. And then my answer comes out right there, 
So I'd have between 16 and 17 birds after my first year. We weren't growing a lot, just 12% a year, and we had a really small starting number there. Now, this is my value for year one. So if I wanted to do a calculation for year two, basically what we're going to be looking at here is every time that I see this PN minus one in the formula, or every time that this 15 appeared, I'm going to use the 16.53 number instead, because the 16.53 is the population the year before the one I'm looking for. All right, so now that we've kind of seen the formula, know what those variables represent, let's go through um, an additional example in the next video.